spectrophotometric color calibration, curves adjustments, edge filter, unpurple filter, color management, Graxpert, drizzle, mosaics, and API for external script support. No, I'm not talking about fix in sight. I'm talking about features that are coming in the new release of Ciro version 1.4. Alright, so as we're getting closer to the new version being released, and there is not a date set, so I don't know what that date is, but I know they've been working on it for a while, so just don't know when. We all just need to be patient, it's coming, and there's a lot of cool new features in this next release that's coming up, so I thought I would take this time to grab a copy of the development version and show you some of the new things that are already in place, what they're working on, just kind of give you a dog and pony show for what's up and coming. I'm not going to cover absolutely everything that's going to be in the new version, meaning a lot of the bug fixes and little tweaks here and there, even some of the functions that are around more of the scientific use for Cyril. Just some of the big things that I know I've been waiting for, that you guys have been waiting for. Again, just thought it would be a fun little video to quickly go through. It's not going to be any kind of a tutorial or anything like that, just to give you a sneak peek of what's coming. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, we're going to start with the user interface and some of the things that have changed have been added, moved around. So we'll start down here in our toolbar. You'll see we have a new button that's tagged as make an intensity profile cut. So this tool will allow you to profile stars and even whole galaxies and provide a graph based on the points that you provide so for example if i wanted to profile in and around the star here i can left click and drag a line probably kind of hard to see it's like a light blue color and hit apply and it'll give us our intensity profile for that star or that region in between the end and the start point of that line that i provided down on the bottom left corner where we used to only have a cut option if you click on the image validation tools button we now also have a gamut option which goes into our color management that we'll discuss here next so now we have with two options instead of just a single cut option down below that is um, our color management button so as it states here on the help tag left clicking will bring up your color management dialog and right clicking will open up a color assessment mode so if we left click this will be where we can set our color management options and select our icc profiles and close back out of this and then if you right click on that same button this is the color assessment mode and this assessment mode is actually defined in that iso 12646 article and what it does is it provides a neutral gray background as well as the white border for visual reference so just another tool to help you prepare and make sure you have correct colors not so much just on your display as much as what you see on your display will also represent what you actually will see if you were to print any of your images so right click again just to turn that back off speaking of right click if we just right click on our image we're used to seeing the crop function that's a little sub menu right now so we have crop rotate and crop and crop sequence our selection options are still the same region of interest rgb align has been changed a little bit they have added two pass and combat to the rgb align function when you right click and then if we move over here into what we usually refer to as our hamburger menu they've moved things out of here this is more strictly now just for help and preferences which i really like so they've moved the tools out of here and they've actually brought them over into a separate tools menu which we'll go over in a minute first of all i'm pretty important there's a link directly to the manual for the software so it's always been there in all the releases and the dev team does a really Really good job with the documentation for the software so get scripts this is new used to be when you click on get scripts it would take you to the script repository now if you click it you're presented with the scripts option in your preferences and just like before you have to have your paths in for all the scripts are at that you may have added yourself but down here on the bottom this is actually loading the scripts that are in the repository on Cyril's website so you can see some of my scripts that I've contributed are in there the ones that start with DSA there's a C star processing script they recently released a couple months ago all the additional scripts that you see you know myself and others talk about in our videos are available right here so now instead of going to the website and downloading it and putting it in one of your correct folders you can just come over here and select which ones that you want and then hit apply it'll download them and then they'll appear in your scripts menu for you so that makes things a lot easier while we're in the preferences let's jump up to the color management and again we talked about this with the uh the color management button down in the left hand corner of the screen but these are the default settings for your workspace this allows us to calibrate our monitors with color profiles so when we print them they will look the way that they look on the screen it's a very important process when you decide when you get to the point and you want to print things nine times out of ten what you see on your screen and then what you get back from the print shop are going to be look a little bit differently in my experience without any kind of color profiling those images tend to be a little bit darker therefore you you lose a little bit of that faint detail 
So this allows us to do that. If you don't print your stuff and you're just uploading it to social media and stuff, then default settings are fine. You don't need to mess with this stuff, but just wanted to make everybody aware that this is coming as well. So next up are the items that they move from that hamburger menu and they put them into a tools menu for us. A lot better organization in my opinion. I like that everything is under its own separate menu now. The stuff they moved over here, like for image analysis, there's statistics, noise estimation, aberration expector, look at your tilt, your dynamic PSF settings, astrometry, we have a plate solver, as well as our annotate function, color management, again, we looked at this before by left clicking on the button down on the bottom of the screen, color conversion matrix. So the color conversion matrix will allow you to apply a conversion matrix to your image. Honestly, don't know a lot about this function right now. I need to do some more research, but it's around more of a color conversion process to get your image looking correct. But I wanted to show it for those of you that do understand what it is that's going to be part of the new release. And we have our fits header, which we're used to seeing before. It's just in the tools menu now. And then we also have our image information, which shows our focal length and pixel size that we've seen before in, in the uh, current version that we're using today. All right, so I just want to take a quick break and ask all of you guys if you consider donating to Cyril, either buying their merchandise or making a donation to them. These guys and gals, like I mentioned before, are busting their butts to keep this software current and add new features to it. I think we'll all agree they're just doing a bang up job on it. So if you can, go buy some of their merchandise, make a donation to their site. Every little bit helps, keeps them going. I'll leave links in the description, buy a t-shirt or a coffee cup, throw them a few bucks. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do the same thing now. And I'm gonna make my donation through PayPal and we'll say 50 euros. Thanks guys, I really appreciate all your hard work. And like I said, if you guys can too, that'd be fantastic. I know they would really appreciate it. So next up is we'll take a look at our image processing menu that this has been rearranged a little bit now too. So it's a little bit shorter. It's not as long as it used to be again, which I like. They got things in sub menus to just to ease of use and be able to find things. We'll start with our stretches submenu. We have our three stretches that we are accustomed to seeing. The new one, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for it, including myself, is a curves transformation. So similar to the histogram transformation, we have our three color channels. So currently they're all enabled. So you can stretch all three channels at once with the curves adjustment, or you can do them individually. We also have two different types of algorithms that we can use, cubic spline and linear. This was one of the things that we're really missing in, in Cyril that I'm, I'm glad to see is in here now. Next up, another big addition for the software is under color calculation. Calibration. So we've all been color correcting our images using photometric color calibration. We now have spectro photometric color calibration, and this tool is better than the photometric color calibration. It is actually pulling from the Gaia catalogs online to more accurately correct the colors within your image. You'll notice right now that they're grayed out. The reason the color calibration is grayed out is because it requires a plate solve first. So we'll go over into astrometry and hit our image plate solver. This is what you're used to seeing with the photometric color calibration. This piece of it has been removed from that tool. So the requirement is image needs to be plate solved first and it's a separate function. They've added solution orders to this, a serial solver. You can also use astrometry.net to do your plate solving. I'm just gonna leave it at the defaults right now. Pulls the information as always from the fits header so I don't need to specify the object. I'm just gonna click okay. Now that I come back up into image processing and color calibration, my two options are available. Available. So if we went into photometric color calibration, which is what we're using today with the current release, looks a lot different, right? The whole plate solver that I just showed you has been removed from it. So it simplifies it. All you got to do is make sure your plate solve and then come in, select your catalog. You still have your background reference if you want to do that as well. And then click OK. And it works just as it does in the current version today. But the real star of the show is the spectro photometric color calibration. Like I said, this one is pulling from the Gaia catalog online, so you do require an internet connection for this to work. And the catalog doesn't belong to Cyril, so they have a status button down here. So if you do ever have issues with it, you can click your status button, and it'll show you over in the console that the Gaia archive is available. If it's offline, this green circle after clicking the check the status will turn yellow to let you know there's a problem, whether it's a problem with the website itself that's hosting it because they're down for maintenance, or possibly you fell off of the internet for some reason. But regardless, uh, this is huge. So so you can specify right now we're a one shot color. So you would select your camera. If your camera is not in here, select your sensor. If neither of those are in there, find something that's as close as possible. Right now I'm in narrow band mode, which allows me to come down to my R, G, and B channels and specify the wavelengths, right? 656, that would be our H alpha, and green and blue will be our O3 regions. Atmospheric corrections, you can specify the atmospheric pressure, your height above sea level. This will be the one that we'll always be using to correct our colors moving forward, I believe. It's a more accurate representation for the data in your image as far as color calibration is concerned. And then the next few items here, tools that we currently have, 
remove green noise, negative transformation. Under the filters section, these should all look familiar to everybody. We do have two new ones. We have an edge preserving filter and an unpurple filter. And within the edge preserving filters dialog box, you have two filter types to choose from bilateral or guided filter. Both of these filters can be used to reduce noise and preserve the sharp edges of your images. The next filter that is new in this release is the unpurple filter. So the unpurple filter will allow you to remove purple ringing around your stars, for example, uh, that you may have from chromatic aberration from a, a lower end refractor, for example. And they actually have a, an example of that in the documentation. So left hand side, you can see they got the purple ringing around the stars. After applying the filter, it cleaned all that up. Another fantastic addition, and I was hoping it was coming, and we have it, is integration with Graxpert. So not only do we have background extraction, we also have denoising, and both of which do have the AI version included with it. Just like with Starnet, the code isn't in Serial. You need to have Starnet installed so Serial can make a call out to it, do its work, and bring it back into the program. Same thing with Graxpert. The Graxpert's code isn't part of Serial, so you need to have Graxpert installed. Then it sends your image out to Graxpert to do the background extraction, for example. Once it's finished, and then it brings it back into Serial for you. But it's just nice. You don't have to jump in and out of Serial now when using this tool. So one of the other huge requests that users of Serial have had was the ability to have a true drizzle. Our current version of drizzle that we have right now is pretty much nothing more than a 2x upscale. So we have it now. We have true drizzle within the software and they've also included an OSC pre-processing script that uses that Bayer drizzle. But in addition to the script you can also obviously drizzle manually. So if we jump over and take a look at a registration tab you can see right here you have a choice between use interpolation or your drizzle with pixel fraction and six different droplet models. And now with the new release we'll be able to create mosaic so the developers have sent me over six panels that they've already stacked so I'd have something to play with here so just to show you how quick and easy it is without going into too many details and then we're going to come over after we create our sequence and go tools astrometry plate solver down here in the bottom we're going to tick solve whole sequence and then over to our registration tab apply existing registration we're going to change current to maximum and hit the estimate button go register once that's done over to our stacking maximize framing set and then hit start stacking so there are panels all stacked this current developer version like i said they're still working on some of the stuff and this is one of the features that they're still working on so you can still see the lines where the panels are at but and i'll show you a screenshot here of the feathering feature that will also be included in this so you won't see any of these lines i do have one that they ran through with the feathering option so i'll just jump over and open this up for you it's the same set of panels except this one has all the lines in between the panels feathered out so you can see it's one continuous image now and the final thing that i just want to go over is the api call so they are currently working on an api that will be available in the next version to allow developers to make calls out to their software external to Cyril, process the image, and then bring it back into Cyril. So the same thing like we just went over with Graxpert, except third-party developers will be able to add that functionality themselves. That's what this Python scripts menu will be. I'm just showing a screenshot right here that one of the developers sent me. It's currently not in the developer version branch that I'm showing you guys today, but so far what it's going to look like when the new version is released under the scripts button, we'll have a flyout for our script files that we're used to seeing and then an additional one for Python scripts. And it looks like they're including an editor and such to help with uh, building those as well. So I'm sure you guys are as excited as I am about all this stuff. I'm, I've been using the development version just to get used to it. So when they do finally release it, I'll start making videos on the new features. I'll probably have to update a handful of the videos I have out now just because things have been moved around and changed the way they work and such. But um, you can expect more videos from me when the release finally hits the streets. I want to take this time to say thanks to everybody on YouTube and buymeacoffee.com for becoming a member. If you want to see your name scrolling by the screen at the end of all the videos, then just join one of my membership programs. Appreciate everybody that takes the time watching the videos. Enjoy reading all your comments. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for recommending to people in the Facebook groups and Instagram. I see you guys out there and it's just, it floors me. So I'm going to wrap this one up. We'll see you in the next one. Clear skies.